This is a time capsule. This is a snapshot of right now. The coasts of California are very different than they were, and they are very different than what they will be. And everywhere there are remnant bits of California's original character, despite every single one of those bits being either threatened or endangered. What is the meaning of that? How do we process that on very human terms? How do I deal with the despair of climate breakdown? We've made some bad mistakes and some course corrections do. But I'm not here to make a better argument. I'd love it if I could just present to you a better story. My name is Obi Kaufman. I've got a particular profession, somewhere between art and science. I'm a painter and I'm an author. I do wildlife renderings and I make maps of this place that I love, California, my homeland. California has more diversity across both plants and animals, flora and fauna. Here in this tiny little high slice of North America than the rest of the entire continent. So it is incumbent upon us to learn about the relationships between all of these incredibly diverse complex systems. In the ocean of time that is the history of California, these living systems have come together in a particular way that don't exist in any other way anywhere on the globe. It is all there, ours to steward. I want to invite you on a journey where I am learning also about all these habitats, all this beauty that fills my heart. Oh man, this is a good place to spend a life, bro. Yeah, nice. so far so good. I mean, <laughs> shoot, see how long she goes. <laughs> We're gonna hang out with Chris Malloy. I am such a fan. You know, the guy is a pro surfer. He's such a prolific filmmaker. And now he is putting all of his efforts into good land stewardship. I grew up in Ojai, California in the late 70s. And I left in 90 to go find the best place on earth. And after 20 years, I realized I grew up in the best place on earth. You had to come back to California yeah. to do that? Oh, yeah. I love that. Chris has invited us up to an area of the Central Coast that is dear to him. His family has been here since the 19th century and attends to a, a deep tradition of reciprocity towards the land and its natural cycles. There's no perfect answer. All I know is that going back in time, this creek was a blue line creek, so it ran all year. And now it only runs a few days a year. We sit on the edge of the creek bed and, and, we, and we wonder, you know, is, is um, you know, are we using too much, you know, or, 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 or you know, is, is it ever going to run again, you know? And that's just as, um, I don't know that. That's what climate breakdown does. It changes the hydrological cycle. The last 18 years are the driest in the past 800 years in California. And everything is changing because of that. Santa Barbara itself retains this character, at least to our eye, of this untouched paradise. What we don't see is how these precious ecological systems have been so damaged. Like we have a very hard time thinking about the future reconciling with the past. I think that, you know, the indigenous people of California had a fundamentally different idea of what time was. So you have a culture for 10,000 years. We can't even figure out 150 years without getting into too many arguments that everything becomes a stalemate and we're all just out for ourselves. What I don't want it to be is an alarmist. People are waking up and it's because they're um, getting outside and they're experiencing um, what we have and who we are and, 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 and that's where change happens.
I think that the future, there's a lot of really amazing people that are looking at ways to make food that can have much less of an impact on the land and be consumed in a healthier, smarter um, way and better for, you know, better for the environment. I, you know, I, and, I, and there's a big movement happening. We need smart land stewards who yeah. are taking care of their land, who can read their land like you can, man. We're waking up to a world that will never be the world it was. What is the character of the world to come? Whatever it is, I'll, you know, I think that we can agree that the decisions that we're making over the next couple decades are gonna influence the quality of our residency for the next several thousand years. Understood. You know? I'm an optimist, Obi. Mm. I'm an optimist. I, I am a prisoner of hope. And the data does suggest that for every point of despair, there is a point of hope. I want my kids to understand you can't save something if you don't love something, and you can't love something if you don't know that thing. That is humanity's only hope. I love all these native plants. We've got the toyon. We've got the black sage. With the lichen creeping up the black sage, that is gorgeous, that is coastal California. As we leave the coastal ranges, we are winding our way back down the coast towards the tail end of the monarch migration. So we're gonna go into this protected eucalyptus habitat and see if we can find any of these precious creatures. We'll see if we see anything. There are immediate physiological responses that your body has to being surrounded by the arboreal body that has a direct immediate response on our immune system, calms our blood pressure. We relax. There they are. You see them? They're flying all around. In a truly boon year, we might see thousands looking like the leaves themselves. Oh, there's one resting on that leaf right now. It seems to be like a heartbeat. Here we are, not an eighth of a mile from the Pacific Ocean. If these trees weren't here right now, we would be able to hear the waves. I'm not a big fan of eucalyptus. It was brought from Australia. It's a native of Australia. Now this is a monotypic stand, right? So this, there's not a lot here but eucalyptus trees. That's how eucalyptus trees like their habitat. They like to push out everything else with the chemicals that they project out into the soil. Everything hates it except for the monarchs. A simple system is a fragile system. We want that natural complexity. We want that biodiversity as rich and deep as it could possibly be. Keeping all of the pieces on the board is the heart of the story. The Channel Islands are a symbol of humanity's hope to live in a better equilibrium with the natural world. These are our Galapagos, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, there's biodiversity and then there's the Channel Islands. Hundreds of species that only exist here. I'm so excited to hang out with Jamie Brissick today. We are headed to the Channel Islands, California's Galapagos, this gem of biodiversity. And I get to spend it with this consummate gentleman, this incredible artist. What a prolific writer Jamie is. He has this sensitivity to the natural rhythms of the coast as he has dedicated his life to surfing. We're celebrating like 20 years of restoration and resurgence uh -huh. on this island uh -huh. as, as, as the major megafauna has been removed or eradicated. It's as if we've gone back 100 years or something like that. And it's so rare to look at a lot of what is California coastline and not see any sort of human footstep. Over the past several dozen years, 
as we have been involved with this eradication process of invasive species, we are seeing the Channel Islands rebound. Oh, Wren, Wren, Buicks, Wren. Oh, Costas, Hummingbird, Little Kinglet. That's a big, you're a big sparrow. Oh, there he is, there he is. Oh, oh this is an island buckwheat. Oh, 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 island, island scrub jay, island scrub jay. Okay, this is much different than, than our, our mainland scrub jay. Do you see how blue that was? I was up, did you see it? No, it I missed away. it, I missed it entirely. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I get so excited over like one little dumb bird, but you know, I'm just one little dumb human. It's so great because you're making me look at everything, whereas <laughs> I would probably be trudging up there, getting this sort of wider thing, looking at the ocean, but not looking at every little detail. Yeah, I mean, you are a journalist and a surfer. You, you, you spend a lot of time in nature, spend a lot of time watching nature. It's your nature. Yeah. You know, it's the rhythm of the wave. It's the, you know, it's the function of, of how you do. In my mind, I'm looking for patterns in the story. Uh -huh. And I'm realizing that whenever, wherever you look, there's story being told. Uh -huh. Oh, what's this now? This is mammoth food. This is the kind of step that these cliffs were 20, 50,000 years ago. This colony has roots that are six feet down into the ground. It makes space for other plants. It plays well with others, okay. if you will. Uh -huh. It's not trying to crowd everything up. I feel like we're waiting for the next Darwin, okay? It's like we had this idea, nature writ in tooth and claw, mm. right? Like it's just, it's all about competition. It's about survival of the fittest. Uh -huh. That's a story of cooperation yes. in the forest. Mutual symbiosis. This win-win situation for so many different types of organisms. You know, we're still striving for balance here on Santa Cruz Island and beyond throughout the park. But we start with telling this older story about how it looked before. The foxes, they're everywhere. That little ear kills me. Look at that. That is a pup, that's probably six weeks old. Less than 20 years ago, there was only a hundred of these in the world. Mm. What the ranger was saying, there, 2,400 is the count now? Yep. 2,800? It's the fastest restoration story of any endangered species. Incredible. The inspiration here, the idea of this land as a time capsule, as a time machine, This gets to a bigger problem of forgiving humans for doing what they do, forgiving yourself, forgiving myself. I want to be part of society. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go be like a, some sort of hermit mountain man because I can't deal with like my carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. The more you research, does it become a more pessimistic outlook? I mean, thinking about it in terms of climate change, in terms of density of population, all the things that are ultimately threatening this natural stuff that we love so much. Do you, uh, does that ever weigh on you? Yeah, every day, every day for sure. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's almost like as if I turn to my painting, it's almost a quasi-spiritual practice. Yeah. In this sort of immersion in California, mm -hmm. do you ever feel like it's an immersion in, into yourself as well? Oh man, well that's the secret of it all, huh? It's more of an impression of yeah. the place. It's sure. a story that I'm telling. I love the story of what is happening on the Channel Islands. What a symbol of hope that we have there. Can we take some of that at scale and apply it to California? A fragile braid of island habitat, humanity is invited to attend to its new urge, its new calling to stewardship to active restoration and to leaving be what should be left to its own ancient ways. What a beautiful day, my friends. <laughs>